After a little battle, we got the tank extracted. So easiest way to do that is disconnect your high pressure and return lines, your EVAP line, ding, and then uh, once you get it lowered a little bit, disconnect the collar for the fill hose, and then it should slide out. Then we're going to clean it up here, stuff a rag in here so we don't get any dirt inside the tank, and then deal with this rusty mess. There's a lock ring on here that we need to use a little air hammer action and pop that off and we should be good to go. Alright, so we have the area cleaned off. Take a little air chisel, prop it up against the ring and as Scotty Kilmer would say, pray. Oh, yeah, that's... <laughs> Chunks of rust just fly off. Let's dial this back a little bit. Let's see here. Hmm. There's a little plastic tab that you need to pry. Maybe you should chisel on the sides here a little bit. Get these tangs busted loose. Now keep in mind, I'm actually keeping the lines on for now to avoid any garbage falling in. And once in a while you can blow off the the debris. <sighs> Try again. Take two. Sweet. Alright, I'm going to put this back down and blow all this junk off of here. Now we'll disconnect the lines. Just a little pinch, pinch tabs and they should slide right off. Luckily, the sending unit's plastic, so they're not corroded or anything. There's one, there's two, and there's the evap line, you pinch, pinch and squeeze trick. Come on, little guy, come on, little guy. Sometimes you can use long needle nose pliers. Get in here and give them a good squeeze. There you go, no big deal. And here's our sending unit with the rubber gasket. I'm going to let that drain off a bit, like so. So comparing the old sending unit or fuel pump assembly and the new one, get this uh, old lock ring off of here. Well, you can see that the plugs are actually different. So this black one's the fuel tank pressure sensor. The white one is the sending unit, you know, level gauge, 
and power and ground to the actual pump. If you look at the new one, not, not the same. It's a four pin flat connector and in the kit they actually give you a harness and wires and butt connectors. I mean come on. It's supposed to be Delphi genuine part. Why do they have to change connectors on you? I don't know. But what I'm thinking is if we take this red clip out and take this plug out, the plugs are the same. Okay? Now this connector itself, it looks like it might be able to pop out of here and if it's possible I just want to put the original original plug onto here so I don't have to do any soldering and crimping and all that nonsense. So let's give it a try. So working with our original unit, let's ply, pry this red tab out of here. That comes out not too bad. And then Make sure you have a catch pan, there's still some gas in there. This black clip should depress and this whole connector should come out. See if we can make that happen. I should pull it right out. One would think. There we go. So that plug is out. Now, now, that little tab right there, push it, don't break it. Probably some o ring under there. I'm trying to get this to come up. I wonder if there's any other clips in there. I'm not. Let's see on this side again. It just looks like that one. Ooh. Trying to come up. Check that out. Sweet. So there's a rubber gasket in here. That connector came out. So hopefully the hole in the new one will be be the same as uh, as this one here. Let's give it a whirl. Alright, working on the new one, we'll take a red tab out, do the same, same procedure, push that black tab in, huh, that slid right out, now hopefully this top piece will just pop out of here, there you go. These things feel pretty chintzy compared to the originals. So there's an O-ring around there. Where's our original? That's what the original looks like. Very similar. Alright. So first let's try to plug in this guy into here. Oh man, it might not work. Dang! So with the original O-ring, this connector slips right in and clips in 
the new pump assembly. Now the question is, can we transfer the, uh, the original black connector to this side because that does not work <laughs> with the new, uh, with the old connector. Alright, so here's the game plan. The pins here on the new one are different in terms of the size. See the two fat ones for the fuel pump and two skinny ones for the sending unit. On the original, they're all the same. They're all skinny. So what I want to do is take this harness off at the fuel pump itself, right there. That should be the same connector on the pump and the one down here. All right, so swap this harness over but de-pin the two purple wires for the level sending unit and put these purple wires in this black connector because we want to obviously keep the new level gauge uh, on here. We, the easiest thing to do would be swap the old level gauge over but you know at 150,000 miles if this fails that's a comeback we don't want that um, but I don't want to cut up the truck's original wiring harness. This is why I'm going this route. So let's see if, uh, if this works. So to de-pin the connector, you have to slide this blue tab out, just push on the sides right there and there. That slides right out. And then we'll look inside and get those purple wires out. Swap this guy over. So to de-pin these connectors, it's actually pretty straightforward. Once you slide the blue clip out of the back, you take a T-pin and you push, see if I can get a close up here, right there. Get a light on there. And you see the little pin still stuck in there? You push on, on the end that is opposite of where the actual spade goes. So you push it and then the wire should slide right out like that. Let's do this one right in there. See where the T pin goes. Right in here. So you push, so let's see here, bingo, so we got this new connector off, now let's transfer the old harness to the new pump. Alright, so first we're going to plug in our connector on the fuel pump itself. Cross your fingers that it fits. Looks like it should. Make sure the tabs are locked in. And indeed they are. That's awesome. Now, all we need to do is uh, route this guy up to our old connector and put in our purple wires. So these pins should clip right in. The one thing you want to make sure to do is this little tab right here. You want to pull it out so it'll clip in to into the connector here. So let's give that a shot. Oh, beautiful. And the last purple wire. Again, make sure the tab is facing out. And slip right in. Let's see here. Oh yeah. Make sure they're tight in there. Let's put in our little plastic thingy <laughs> for lack of a better term right there perfect it clipped in 
And then our red tab. So this is going to go right in here. Perfect. Make sure that that black tab is snapped in. And it is. And finally, the magic red tab goes in here. Bingo. We have a <laughs> modified new fuel pump assembly with a new sending unit. That is awesome. So that's that. Should, and the, obviously the original plug will fit right in. Beautiful. A couple of other things to install on the pump before putting it on the gas tank. This rubber seal that goes right up here. Sweet. And our new lock ring. This is an Airtex part sold separately. I don't know why they don't just include it with the pump. So, let's see here. This goes down like so. Just looking at the old one. Kind of fits in. It'll just lock in place. That's it. Alright, let's go put it in the tank. Also, another difference on this design, the strainer is apparently inside the. Uh, the actual canister here, while on the original one, strainer is external. That's probably a better design if it's external, right? Oh yeah, let's put on our float. Comes in the package here. So this guy just kind of should just clip right in. Sweet. So to make sure this works, we can just measure the resistance at the pins up there. If you guys want me to do it? I'll do it. So here's proof that our new level gauge works. That's 248 ohms and the other all the way down is 40 ohms. So it goes from 40 linearly all the way to 240 around there all right just makes you feel good before putting it in all right time to install the assembly lower it down gently the rubber gasket should Go right in the hole. There's a locator tab on there. And it's spring loaded. So let's go all the way around and make sure it seats. Line up the lock ring with the tabs. I don't do these every day, you know. So that looks like it's gonna work. Now just need to gently tap it, tap it back into place. Maybe lube up the little tangs right here. Maybe a little fluid film would be a better idea. I don't know. Use your air hammer again on the gentle setting. I'm gonna drive this sucker around real carefully. Come on. You don't want to get the long barrel out for this. It. 
should turn quite a bit. If in doubt, back up and try again. So this new lock ring is kind of a pain to get in here. So what I did was put a little pressure down so the lock ring would actually slip under these tabs. And you know with the air hammer, got damaged just a little bit here, but no, you know it's in there for good. Make sure this plastic tab engages right there. So it's perfect. We just need to put our little clips on here and plug in our hoses. So back to our old sending unit here. We have to scavenge these little clips. So just use a little pick and slide them off the plastic here. There's one. I mean, these things are pretty resilient, so there's there's that one. And then there's this one. Yeah. It's like you always you get one and then the other one wants to sit back down, so that's two. Don't forget to salvage your fuel tank pressure sensor. You can actually use this as, as a pressure sensor, you know, low pressure for, I don't know, maybe we'll think of some experiments to do with this guy, but it's still good, so we'll keep that and that's pretty much it. I don't think there's anything else we can salvage off of here. All right, putting on those little plastic doodads. There's one. There's two. Now our hoses should clip right on. Let's make sure the little clips engage right there. Cool. There's our EVAP, and finally our return hose. Man, that seems kind of... Oh, the O-rings are inside of here, so... That should be good. I think we're just about ready to install our gas tank. One thing that did not survive is the filler neck. Here's what happened to it. Oh, let me just get it out. Here's what happens to filler necks in Pennsylvania and New York State. I could, I took the clamp off, and then this thing just broke right off. See, the remaining uh, metal is inside the hose here. That's nice. Hopefully, we can extract that, but we'll need a new, new filler neck for sure. Ugh. Evap leaks. All right, guys. Moment of truth here. The tank is back in. Hoses are connected. We're still waiting on the filler neck, but that won't stop us from running this truck. So I'm gonna hot wire the fuel pump again, and we should see our current ramp. So let's see here. <laughs> Nothing. You know why? Because I disconnected that ground for the filler neck. This little strap right here. Apparently the fuel pump grounds on. Well, I'll show you in just a sec. So right here. There's a ground strap <laughs> that we gotta tighten this bolt down and then our fuel pump should run. Alright, take two. Sweet. We hear fuel. What's our amp reading right now? Oh, 
only half an amp, huh? Let's see, unplug it. Re zero our amp clamp. That's important. Plug it back in. Huh, it's only half an amp. Interesting. Well, let's see if it fires up. I don't know, something goes wrong with my amp clamp. We're at six and a half amps. Beautiful. Right there, 6.5. Let's, uh, there we go. Decrease the time base. So we'll save this as a known good waveform. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Looks like ten commutator segments. That's awesome. I'm actually going to put the fuel pump relay back in.